I'm in mood for some Lynette. Cat with a cat. Yeah. I understand. Approach <laughs> stealthy. Now activating chat mode. You made me jump there. I thought they'd finally caught me. What? Objectively speaking, the trouble was entirely of my own making. Half an hour ago, I was at Hotel de Boer for a drinks reception. It was to celebrate the successful opening of a show. But it was draining my energy. So, I waited for the right moment, then snuck away so I could switch to standby mode. Are you a robot? I forgot you you talk like this. I see so they send someone to find him and bring him back, but why? Um, probably because I'm playing the lead role in the show. Oh. Is that so surprising? I'm always getting invitations to do solo performances. I just usually get Linny to write back and turn them down. But then came the Fontanalia Film Festival. We took all the kids from the House of the Hearth out to see a film, and after it finished, they all started clamoring for me to try out acting for some reason. Even Linny was chanting along with them. Anyway, it just so happened that a director called Mary who had sent me an invitation right around then. I'll spare you the details, but basically, I ended up accepting it. This is a dramatic debut of the magician's puppet. Yep, you nailed it. I'm playing the role of a puppet. In fact, hmm. the show's called The Lost Puppet, and it's a masked mime show. So, I don't have to do any facial expressions or say any lines. Literally just a series of <laughs> physical movements. The director says it's a very avant-garde art form. So you're playing the role of a dead doll. Great. That does sound pretty avant-garde, but uh, can you can people understand the plot? Art is not comprehended by the mind, but felt in the heart. At least, that's what the director says. Anyway, if nothing else, the opening performance seemed to go down well. At the drinks reception, everyone was crowding around me, saying, Triumphant character portrayal. Faithful adaptation of the original work. Unequivocally, quintessentially avant-garde, and stuff like that. But being the center of attention is draining. So the moment they left me to go harass the director instead, I was out of there. You weren't able to use Linny as a human. The other thing is, some weird things happened while I was on the stage. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Bonnie. I didn't mean to leave you out of the conversation. My bad. Bunny's your pet cat or your sibling? No, we just met. Hmm? We bumped into each other right after I slipped away. I already named her, yes. Well, it'd be kind of difficult for us to communicate otherwise. Besides, I think she's taken a liking to the name. Haven't you, Bonnie? Yeah, that's right. Good kitty. We'll go find your owner soon, I promise. Nope. She's wearing a collar, and for the most she part, is? she's pretty well groomed. If she is a stray, she hasn't been for long. Her stomach's been growling a lot. I guess she must have been missing for a few days now. As much as I'd love to hang out with her for a while longer, her owner's probably worried sick about her. Assuming she has an owner, that is. <sighs> but the reception... I should probably show my face there again at some point, even if it's just to make excuses and leave again. Mm, decision time. Is this a tough decision for you? Well, I just find it exhausting, thinking through all the different ramifications of different choices and so on. That's more Lenny's area than mine. So, unless it's something really important, I usually just leave the decision making to him. But for once, he's not here when you need him. Bet that doesn't happen often. It's fine. He got from me to make me a little something for just this situation. Oh. Oof. A mask? A fatometer. A, f a fatometer? What's it this? looks pretty over the top, I know. But it's essentially just a box of cards. He kept the design simple, so it'd be harder to break. The way it works is, I pick a card at random, then look at the number on the card. 
and how does that help you make the decision? Well, for example, if the number on the card is five or higher, I help Bonnie find her owner. If it's less than five, I go back to the reception. I mean, works. Simple and straightforward. I just believe in the bond between me and my cards, and my fate will reveal itself to me in numerical form. At least, that's what Linny said. Anyway, I guess I'll give you a demonstration. Sure, let's see. Zinita tends to draw a card, the device emits a horrendous grinding. I didn't like that. Was I using it wrong? Hmm, maybe if I just... Smash the card while the cards form the ground, then she picks one at random. I guess Clearly, works. Clearly there's some design flaws to iron out. I'll have to let Fremine know. Maybe this <laughs> design issue. It's a skill issue. Let's see, which card did I get? Four. So that means no help in Bonnie. Well, the cards fell on the ground though, so I don't think it counts as fate. If you want to get the right answer, you have to let fate decide. Also something Linny said. Hmm? So to put it another way, if picking a card up off the ground is how to not leave it to fate, then that means it must be the wrong answer. I think what Linny really meant is sometimes you want to accept the answer you didn't want. Well, yes. Um, or... Why don't you pick a card? Since I ran into you here, that means uh, our fates are like interfering with each other. All right, all right, I'll pick a card. Thank you. This one is final, I promise. Here, take the fateometer. If it's five or above, that means fate successfully changed. Anything lower than five is a fail. Also, if you have your own thoughts about what I should do, feel free to share it. Now that I've got a good problem solver here to help, I don't need to run every little thing by fate. Whoa, I think you should head back to the generation. session, I think you should head Bonnie, how about you do neither? Let's leave this one to fate. Alright, then let's see where fate will lead me. The random checks triggered by the fundamental often serves as indicator of for destiny scores or the success, success or failure of an action. Press to draw a card and get a random number between 1 to 20. If the number displayed is greater than or equal to the check difficulty, you will pass this check, otherwise will fail. Wait, what? Okay. The random checks triggered by the fundamental often serves as indicator for destiny scores or the success of fa or failure of an action. Press to draw a card and get... Okay, I'm lost. I guess I'll figure it out. Sure. Let's see. I'm not sure. So let's draw a card. Five. It has to be either five or less or bigger. Let's try this one. Fourteen. So we're looking for Bonnie's owner? I guess works. I have to ask about this deck of there's cards. There's cards in total, numbered one to twenty. So there's only a one in five chance of drawing less than a five. Oh. I should also mention, this time the cutoff was 5, but I just set that to wherever I feel like. You really don't want to go back to that reception party. To put in perspective, I said I'd only do the show if I drew a 1. Fate can be pretty sneaky sometimes. Hmm? So how do you plan to find Bonnie's owner? Um, I think I'll go to the Steambird and see about putting an ad in the paper. You want to come along? I think Bonnie wants you to come with. It's not like I have anything else to do. But let me let me see. Where is the color on this cat? That bow tie is no is not a color. If the cat had a color, then shouldn't she have I don't know a place, a number, a name? Sure, if it means I get to hang out with you a bit longer. Charming, Lumin, charming. I got a fatometer. Do I get to keep this? What is that? Wait. What is this? 
nine one forty nine. I have no idea what this number is. I guess this is ten. So I'm. I guess that circle. That's a zero. That's the weirdest zero I've seen. The stupendous day starts with a steam bird. Oh, hi, Lynette. Hi, traveler. What can I help you? Any commission in there about a missing cat? Hmm. I don't think so. Have you picked up a stray? Basically, yes. Yep. If there's no commission to follow up on, could we post a notice about the missing cat instead? Why, of course. What a kind thing to do. Just fill out the form. This is the most obedient cat I've seen. Well, we've registered you as missing. You can stay at my place until your owner finds you. Also, I just wanted to say thanks for keeping us company for so long. Well, I should probably head back to the drinks reception. Hopefully most of the people have left by now. If you've got some time, you should stop by my place tomorrow to see Bonnie. There's a nice cup of tea in it for you. Well, I'll be there. Right. See you then. Well, the next morning, okay, I guess I'll t pose here for uh, a couple hours. I haven't seen 49 white form for so long. I forgot I about that. This cat belongs to me. I okay. already told you, this isn't your cat. Just take a brief. How, how are people fighting over a cat? What's going on, well, indeed? You're here. As you can probably see, you'll have to take a rain check on that tea I promised you. At least for now. This is my friend's cat. He's preoccupied with some important business, so I came to retrieve her in his stead. Passive checks are a special type of chest that need not be actively triggered, but instead will automatically trigger at specific times. If you pass, you will find some hidden information such as irregularities in a person's attitude or sense. What am I doing? doing? Detective work now? I thought I was hanging out with Lynette. Inside checks to say this lady expression seems a bit unnatural. The way she speaks is loud and uttered. It's like she's no, deliberate. No, it's far more likely okay. this cat uh, escaped from the humane society. So they're both lying. The hesitation in here seems like he could be hiding something. How about we let Bonnie decide? Uh, Bonnie? Uh, that's the name I've given her in the meantime. Let's see who Bonnie decides to approach. Animal handling. Why does it have a tarot card? Oh, that's why. Let's see who Bonnie decides to approach. Draw a card. Seven. Check failed. Bonnie instead runs to hide behind her and poking her head out. Okay. This complicates things. I don't think she'd be so attached to it. There's no way to tell who the own. Yep. I told you before. This is my friend's cat. It's normal for her not to trust me. Listen, I'm the director of the Humane Society, okay? We've got so many strays, dogs, cats, you name it. I'm not even the one feeding them most of the time. You can hardly expect the cat to recognize me. Exactly, then how are you so sure she belongs to you? She just looked somewhat familiar, so I came to check, just in case. If she turns out to be one of ours, I'll take her back. Simple as that. Even if that's not the case, the Humane Society could still take her in. If no one else comes to claim her, that is. Good question, Lumin. What in the world is the Humane uh, Society? We're an organization that specializes in rescuing and sheltering stray animals. We've been in business for several decades now. I'm Bernard, the current director. The Humane Society? Huh. The name sounds familiar. I remember hearing good things. Near the one in the Cartier Lyonnais? Yes, yes, that's the one. Anyway, um, if it's not too much trouble, could I possibly take a closer look at the cat? If it turns out I really am mistaken, I suppose that means the cat belongs to this lady here. She would be the only remaining option after all. It belongs to my friend. Well, with us here to keep watch, it should be fine. Go on, Bonnie. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, nope. Looks like I was mistaken. They do look similar, but there's an ever so slight difference in this one's fur color. Deepest apologies, friends. Well, I suppose this means I still have a missing cat to search for. Apologies again for the confusion. Okay, I'm confused. So, is this your friend's cat? Mm. Oh, uh, yes, exactly. Wait a second. You lied earlier, didn't you? Lied? I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. A liar always has a tell. The look in their eyes, their breathing pattern, the way they hold themselves. The things that can give you away are often more numerous than you would think. What are you talking about? Well, someone's an expert. You, you're conflating baseless conjecture with fact. Normally, when someone is called out, their breathing speeds up as they begin to panic. But your breathing pattern hasn't changed one bit. In fact, it's been strangely calm and measured this entire time. It stands to reason, then, that your agitated behavior earlier was all an act. If you're a bad guy, I'm sure you'll take off running the first chance you get. If you're a good guy, the most likely explanation is that you're a member of the guards or some similar organization. Okay. <laughs> and you're basing this off of? Intuition. Nothing more. <laughs> Intuition. <laughs> Intuition. Well, I have to hand it to you, Lynette. You're right. I'm a member of the guards. The name's Elodie. I'm currently investigating a cross-border smuggling case. This cat here... Bonnie, was her name? Well, her owner is one of the prime suspects of our investigation. Interesting. This complicates things. A couple of days ago, our suspect got wind that we were on his tail and fled. That's most likely how he got separated from the cat. I just so happened to stumble upon your notice in the Steambird. So, I decided to see if he'd come back for her. But... It looks like I overestimated him. Uh, if I were on the run, I don't think I'd come back either. Why do they do this? At least in Hangout, don't do like this. Because this is literally one one phrase and they separate it into two choices. Why would they do that? The impact of this case has been huge. The Marachose Phantom, the guards and the Special Patrol have all launched investigations. If there was even the slightest chance that he would show himself, I had to follow up on the lead. So what's being smuggled? A new kind of illegal drug. Imitation synth. We confiscated all the synth on the market, but addiction isn't something that goes away overnight. Even without substances on the market, people are still looking for a way to get their next fix. And criminals are all too eager to capitalize on that addiction. That was the impetus for imitation synth. Needless to say, a small-scale market opened up very quickly. After the original synth debacle, we put several measures into place to prevent similar incidents from occurring. The perpetrators got smart, though, and shifted their sales overseas before those measures could kick in. That's when the imitation synth smuggling began. We only recently got word of the presence of imitation synth overseas. We managed to track down evidence of some early transactions. What we were able to find out, however, hasn't proven that useful given the amount of time that has passed. The Marachose Phantom launched an investigation to track down every person in Fontaine capable of producing a drug like that. That's how we learned about Bonnie's owner. Who is he exactly? He's a researcher at the Fontaine Research Institute. His name is Pierre. Pierre Lafayette, to be exact. Lafayette. Lafayette. You know him? Strange, she usually slows her expression in mechanical. The Marchose Phantom found him in Poisson. In addition to the cat, he also had a pendant with him. Uh, okay. Interesting. At first, there wasn't much cause for suspicion. A search of his house didn't reveal much to go off of either. The Marchose Phantom very nearly left it at that. It was only later that we realized the coat of arms on his pendant belonged to none other than the Lafayette family. One of the most infamous aristocratic families in Fontaine. Obviously, this discovery prompted a further investigation into Pierre. At that point, however, we discovered that he'd already fled. 
Now the guards and the special patrol are all searching for him. Could he have? Could his family be hiding him? It's not possible, actually. The Lefevre family has been gone for a long time. Exactly. Many years ago, several important members of the family, including the patriarch, were murdered by an assassin of unknown origin. From that point on, family's power and influence took quite the hit. The family is engaged in all manner of crimes. As you can imagine, there's no shortage of people waiting in the wings to take their revenge. And with the family severely weakened, they were able to do just that. Most of the remaining family members succumbed to sickness or hunger. The ones that survived are currently living out their days under a new identity. Pierre is one of those very survivors. He's been hiding away in the Fontaine Research Institute all these years. His true identity unbeknownst to all. Until now, that is. It's really okay to share all this information. That's what I was, uh, what I was thinking about. We're in the middle of the street with a member of the guards. Is it really alright to share all of this in the middle of the street? Where everyone can, you know, listen in? I don't know. Just do what well, you want. My fellow guards have told me all about how smart and courageous you both are. And I know you possess a strong sense of justice. There could be a chance that Pierre or one of his accomplices might attempt to get close to Bonnie. Now that you've been briefed on the situation, I was hoping you'd help us keep a lookout. If I take Bonnie back to the guards with me, there's no way Pierre will try and come for her. Not even the most daring of criminals would attempt something like that. <laughs> we should keep Bonnie with us for the time being, I guess. I have to admit, I'm not holding out too much hope that Pierre will come back for her. But if there's even the slightest chance, then it's worth a shot. Well, I've got some other leads to follow up on. If Pierre does appear, please contact me right away. All right. <laughs> What's wrong? Indeed. What's wrong? It's nothing. I'm fine. Don't you lie to me. It's just the head of the Lefebvre family. He was the eminent oh. person who kidnapped me all those years ago. Oh. I was at a dinner party. Someone tricked me into boarding the Lefebvre family carriage. Whoever it was, they took me back to their home but before anything worse could happen yeah father interfered. Arlecchino got involved <laughs> then the assassin hello dimension yep that definitely Arlecchino yep father was the one who orchestrated the fall of the Lefevere family that's what led Lenny and I to join the house of the hearth after all these years I never thought I'd hear the Lefevere name again Daijobu. Don't worry about me. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I was just thinking about Linny. He's been acting strange recently. He avoids me for days on end, consumes himself with some secret investigation, and then out of the blue pushes me to do that acting job. Thinking about it now... It's almost like the one I drew from that deck of cards was part of his plan all along. He must have asked Fermine to help him out. In any case, I know he's hiding something from me. He's really pulled out all the stops this time. You think he knows about it's Pierre? Possible. I'm sure he tried to send me away because he was afraid it would bring up some painful memories for me. It wasn't necessary, though. Even after all these years, he's still as overprotective as ever. You'll have to help me teach him a lesson if we run into him along the way. Along the way? Are we going somewhere? Yep. I want to head to the Fontaine Research Institute to learn more information about Pierre. Just let me activate search mode and then we'll head out. Let me activate search nice. mode. <laughs> Maybe we'll run into Linny along the way. Alright. Are you trying to help Linny with his winner or are you trying to prove yourself? Again with the two choices but the same okay a bit of both perhaps well it was For both the most part though we just have the sense that something's not right something isn't adding up about Pierre's story i'm just not sure what 
I also want to know what secret he's hiding. Sometimes you've just got to take the bull by the horns, right? Okay, I'll write a letter explaining everything to the crew. Once that's done, we can head out. Sure. There's Lini and Chevros. Chevros. Lynette, you're uh, not at rehearsal? You can drop the act, brother. In fact, I don't think either of us will have a need for acting anytime soon. You should know better than to try and keep something from me. You've never been able to do that, even when we were kids. <sighs> and that's why I tried to distract you with the masked mime show. But I guess you're just too good. Care to introduce us to your new assistant? <clears throat> this is Officer Shavras, captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. You may have met her already. We meet again. I don't remember where I met her. Nice to see you. I should clarify something. Mr. Lenny's here at my invitation, not the other way around. To borrow your expression, Miss Lynette, I suppose that would make him my assistant more than anything. We've brought on Mr. Linney as a consultant in the past. He was instrumental in helping us crack a case involving a perpetrator who used magic tricks to commit crimes. I was hoping he'd be able to provide some valuable insight this time around as well. Are you here because of the that guy case? Ah, uh, so you've heard everything then? Pretty much. That's exactly why we're here. There's always been questions surrounding the fall of the Lefebvre family. Lefebvre. Some people even believe the House of the Hearth was involved. Whoever was behind it all well. was extremely cautious. They didn't leave a shred of evidence. This very fact, however, leads me to believe it was indeed the work of that carpenter. <laughs> well. <laughs> I took a look at the entrance and exit records of all the carriages that night. Let's just say it wasn't hard to deduce that there's ill will between you two. Don't worry. I don't have any evidence to that effect, and I certainly don't plan on going to bat for such a despicable family. Plus, you were victims back then more than anything. I sought Mr. Linney's help with the smuggling case. Nothing more. You're really teaming up with the House of Heart? I don't know <clears throat> why Lumine is so uh, so against the, the House of Heart. It, it's a collaboration between us as people, not the organizations we represent. Besides... By working together, we can expose the truth as quickly as possible. You can hardly say that's at odds with the justice my organization strives for. I'm assuming you wouldn't be opposed to some extra help. I guess uh, we're tagging along. I was planning to invite you from the very beginning, Miss Lynette. It's just that my assistant here raised some objections. Uh... Lenny, I'm not the same person I was back then. That little girl who did nothing but cower in the corner in fear, she doesn't need saving anymore. I guess you didn't have a vision back there? Back then? I know you want to protect your little sister, but little sister don't stay little forever. Indeed. Uh, that's I'm experience. Sorry, Lynette. You're right. I let my concerns get the better of me. Oh, and the next time you want to distract me, you should try a different approach. Maybe something that she wouldn't hate. <laughs> Who's this? You pick up a stray while I was gone? Uh, it's a bit complicated. Long story. I'll explain later. Anyway, her name's Bonnie. Well, if there are no objections, then I suppose the only thing left to say is... Lynette? Traveler? Welcome to the team. It appears the Lefebvre family was very particular in their use of insignias and emblems. The family would use different emblems to mark differences in status, blood relation, and the like. In fact, the insignia that was discovered on the pendant was used to represent an illegitimate child. Well, <clears throat> that sounds like royalty to me. That would mean Pierre is a bastard child, what? It's highly likely. That very status might have been what allowed him to emerge from the fall of his family relatively unscathed. It would also explain why he was able to assume a new identity as a researcher with relative ease. We discovered something interesting, though. After talking to some of his co-workers, it appears he pretty much works at the Institute in name only. He's practically been cast out. Apparently, Pierre was once addicted to synth. <laughs> he tried to use the resources at the Institute to create a substance with a similar effect. 
He claimed it was just for research purposes, but the Institute revoked his access to the relevant materials regardless. He was placed on disciplinary leave, pending a thorough investigation of his actions. But it seems the Institute ran into some trouble along the way. Could have been a lack of personnel or a timing issue. In any case, they had to table their formal investigation into Pierre. Unfortunately, that also included reporting any relevant information to the higher authorities. As for his family background, it appears none of his co-workers at the Institute were aware of that information. All they could tell us was that he was quite the recluse. Maybe we'll have to take our investigation elsewhere then. Did you find anything useful at his residence? Other than the pendant, we didn't find anything else of note at his residence in Poisson. His residence was in Poisson. Based on samples of imitation synth we've been able to analyze, it appears the substance leaves behind strong traces wherever it's produced or stored. Those traces might not be obvious to the casual observer, but they're not something our guard poodles would miss. Pierre's home, though, came up completely clean. We didn't find any records indicating possible involvement in overseas transactions either. So, the Marachose Phantom didn't view him as a major suspect at first. Hmm. Maybe he had a separate, dedicated area where he made the imitation synth. Well, his neighbor. I forgot. Lynette was in this. Stretches of time. She was talked way too much. Out and about so much, people would have spotted him around Poisson, but residents said they barely ever saw him in town. If his reclusive nature was just a matter of keeping a low profile, I guess it would make sense for him to have a secret base to carry out his business. After he disappeared, the guards conducted a thorough search of Poisson, but they didn't come across any suspicious locations. Poisson. What is it, Lynette? You know Hotel de Boer, where I first found Bonnie? <laughs> to get there from Poisson, you have to cross a stretch of ocean. It's not somewhere a cat could just wander off on its own. A cat? You mean... <coughs> Bonnie is Pierre's cat. Oh, that's right! When the Marachose Phantom first tracked him down, I remember there being something about a cat in their report. So this is her? From what we've Talk about being two steps ahead of competition. doesn't seem like the type to venture out without a purpose. <clears throat> so what you're saying, Lynette, is that Bonnie couldn't have gone missing in Poisson. If that's true, then... She must have wandered off only after Pierre brought her to, the secret, to his secret base. Exactly. Bonnie might even know where it is. Wait. You think the cat can lead us there? I mean, it's a cat, not a She's dog. She's not trained like one of our guard poodles. How is she the guard to what? what we want her to do? Didn't will give it a try? I can give it a go. What? Lynette will give meow. it a try. Meow, meow. Meow? Lynette, Lynette speaks cat. The beach and beneath the cliffs. The place we're looking for is most likely north of the court of Fontaine. Well, I've certainly never taken a witness statement like this before. <laughs> well, if it uh... works out, maybe it's something worth getting used to. Cats and humans are actually pretty alike. When it comes to communication, most of what we want to convey can be accomplished through body language alone. Are you humans tend to the bridge between cats and humans? You look like that. one. Of course, body language has its limitations. You're not going to be able to get across anything too complicated. The important thing is that we now have a lead. Let's try and find a place that matches the clues Bonnie gave us. There we are. Seems like Bonnie is trying to take us somewhere. No, oh, follow Bonnie. I see a challenge. Gardenex ahead. Look out! Aren't these supposed to be with the police? Wow, Lynette, you found this place so easily. If I thought there was any chance you'd say yes, I'd recruit you into the special patrol here and now. No questions asked. <laughs> Sounds familiar. I pretty much receive letters daily from people trying to poach her from me. 
Let's just focus on our search. There's a lot to investigate. Investigate. Aha! Just as we thought. This is where the imitation synth was being made. Looks like he's got more than just imitation synths stashed around here. In addition to the raw materials needed to synthesize the substance itself, there's a large quantity of cleaning agents and a few drugs I haven't been able to identify. These cleaning agents are likely used to dispel traces of the substance, like its smell. The Special Patrol did some digging into imitation synth. Our records indicate that it's very difficult for ordinary people to detect traces left behind by the stuff. I'm sure that was the case for Pierre as well. It must have taken a considerable amount of time and skill to ensure all those traces get washed away. But what are these other drugs for? Depression. The material these bags are made of, it's quite rare. <laughs> it's very same, actually. I thought I was doing a Lynette hangout. <gasps> I don't even know where Lynette is. Position of these bags. I took a closer look, and it appears they're not only waterproof, but also corrosion and leak resistant. Even the strings look specially designed to keep the bags closed nice and tight. I came across some bags made of the same material just now, but they were much smaller and thinner. From the look of them, they seemed far less durable as well. Very similar, actually. Normally, it would be easy for a guard poodle to sniff out the imitation synth, but if it was sealed away in a bag like that, it might be possible to elude detection for some time. But what could these big bags be for, then? If the goal is to keep the imitation synth hidden and sealed away, these bags seem a bit too conspicuous. All right. Oh, there's the girl. When the Mar Chaussee Phantom searched Pierre's house, there was no sign of these barrels, right? Hmm. You're right. That doesn't seem like his way of doing things. How did he get them here then? Only the lower halves of the barrels appear to have been submerged in water. Based on the various ingredients we found, this appears to be where Pierre was cooking up his imitation synth. It looks like he used a special cleaning agent to get rid of any residual traces of the substance on his person before he left. That's how he was able to get past the guard poodles. So then he transferred the imitation synth into small sealed bags and took it somewhere else for the drop-off. No. I don't believe our suspect is the kind of person who'd go around carrying incriminating evidence with him. That would potentially create too many eyewitnesses. The cleaning agent and the sealed bags might get past the guard poodles. But if a member of the public or even a guard on patrol happened to see him during the drop-off, a quick search would reveal everything. That's still a very risky operation. The barrels we found were wet around the base, but the top half was dry. As if they'd been standing upright in the water. Hmm. If you put a barrel in the water, it will normally float on its side. Unless it's heavily loaded, in which case it'll sink. Yes. With flotation rings around the body of the barrels, they'd stay upright in the water. And then, he could afford to load them more fully. Oh, yes. You think he used floating barrels? Hmm. I suppose if he acted at night, when there are very few other boats around and visibility is low, it's a valid theory. We can't rule it out. But then, wouldn't the barrels be carried off by the waves or the currents? How would the person doing the pickup know where to look? Traveler. Can you come take a dip in the sea with me? I have a feeling mm -hmm. somewhere down there, we might find some rope. If a rope can be used to keep a pet from running That's away, a little sudden. Then why not a barrel? 
We As expected, we found a few pieces of rope and some anchoring stones underwater. If you attach them to a floating barrel, it would look like this. Indeed. With this anchoring system, it would be possible to use floating barrels for the drop off. You would just need to drop them in the water at the agreed upon location. We also came across the wreckage of a small boat. It must have been left out on the water and capsized due to the force of the wind and waves. Its small size, however, would have made it perfect for staying undetected. Let's talk this through. Based on the evidence we've collected, it seems like Pierre would row a small boat out to the agreed upon transfer point, drop off the barrels, leave, and then row back and retrieve them after the transfer was complete. It could be that he was trying to avoid meeting up with his associate face to face. As one of the sole survivors of the Luffy Ver family, maybe he was just used to that sort of elusive lifestyle. It seems like Pierre deliberately chose the floating barrel method so that the goods could be dropped off and picked up at separate times. That way, the two parties wouldn't have to meet each other. Well, if that's the case, they must not have a very close working relationship. Let's not jump to any conclusions just yet. Assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. It's possible they were just trying to keep a low profile. Two boats sailing to the same location at once could be too conspicuous. The most important thing is that we can now confirm Pierre wasn't acting alone. The floating barrel drop-off system is proof enough of that. Let's say for now that he was only in charge of producing the imitation synth. That would mean there has to be at least one other person involved in the operation. Likely in charge of transporting the goods across the border. Since we've determined that the goods were transported by boat, maybe we can track down some travel logs or something. We can certainly check the various ports for that information. It's possible, however, that Pierre's associate also used a small boat for the transport and docked along the shore rather than at a large port. If that's the case, it's unlikely there would be any record left behind. Absolutely. Before Pierre disappeared, we made sure to investigate all sorts of outward bound vessels. We also had port authorities keep a lookout for anything suspicious. Unfortunately, we were never able to find out how they managed to get the imitation synth across the border. You're right. Whatever vessel was used for the pickup, the person responsible for smuggling the substance out of Fontaine would have had to use a larger vessel for the actual transport. That's the only way they would be able to smuggle on a large enough scale to make a profit. They must have found a way to disguise the imitation synth to clear port inspections. Exactly. We can't let any opportunities slip through the cracks. Although, given the amount of ports that could be involved, we should probably split up. I'll run home and ask some of my brothers and sisters to try and dig up some information. I should also head back and update my platoon on our progress. I'll grab some reinforcements while I'm at it. Lynette, Traveler, why don't you head to Lumidus Harbor and see what you can find out? All right. Come on, Bonnie. You too. Oh, Lynette, Traveler. And Bonnie too. What brings you all here? Hmm? Did something happen? Oh, I see. Thank you for everything you're doing for the people of Fontaine. What are you doing here? I'm in charge of guarding the port. You mentioned you were after some travel logs, right? I can go fetch those for you. Okay. Looks like I've got another hard day of work ahead of me. <sighs> no, not usually. It's this incident that happened recently. Before that... Everything was normal. All we had to do was confiscate anything suspicious and we could call it a day. Pretty simple stuff. But things are much more complicated now. We somehow let suspicious cargo pass through the port undetected. Not even our guard poodles were able to sniff it out. Even worse, we still don't know how the perpetrator was able to conceal the goods so well. By suspicious cargo, do you mean imitation synth? Yep. However, prohibited substances are just one example. We confiscate all sorts of contraband during the course of our inspections. Or at least, we're supposed to. So what happens to the goods you confiscate? Oh, 
Well, we keep them in a storage locker. If they turn out to be something particularly dubious, we'll turn them over to the Maison Orderly. If the goods are only slightly suspicious but could otherwise be harmless, like raw materials that could potentially be used to create contraband, we return them to the ship they were confiscated from instead of letting them pass through the port. Sorry for the wait. These are the travel logs for all the recent activity at the port. So that's a guard dog. Oh, you brought Gerard with you. Uh, actually, he followed me here himself. It's like he smells something on me. A cat, maybe? Perfect pair. Huh. I wonder why Gerard is reacting to you two so strongly. Have you never seen a cat and a dog in the same place? Huh? We were so careful not to touch it, but we still ended up with traces on us. If it leaves a residue so easily, I just don't understand how the culprit was able to disguise the goods at all. Why don't you have a look at the travel logs first? All ships coming in and out of the port are recorded here, except for the ones the port authorities ride to and from work. Then that's it. The Humane Society. Yep. Their name is all over the exit logs. The purpose for leaving is always listed as overseas adoption. Ah, the director of the organization explained that, actually. He said a lot of the cat and dog breeds unique to Fontaine are also very popular overseas. So, his organization <coughs> offers an overseas adoption program. Bernard, the director of the Humane Society, was the man who came looking for Bonnie earlier. Have you figured it out too, Traveler? The way the criminal disguised the goods? When Bernard asked to take a closer look at Bonnie, he was actually checking whether there was any imitation synth in her stomach. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, what? The sealed bags we found at the secret base. They were specially made to be corrosion resistant. And there were gaps around the lids of the barrels, and airbags were used to keep them upright in the water. Well, that's smart. Those drug shepherds found at the secret base. She most likely didn't recognize them because they're not used on human beings. It's an anesthetic used on pets. The perpetrator must have given it to the animals. Here. Must have made the animal swallow the sealed bags full of imitation synth at his secret base. Then, he stuffed them into floating barrels and left the rest to Bernard. The sealed bags combined with an animal's body odor would certainly be enough to mask the scent of imitation synth. During our inspections, we would have never thought to inspect the bellies of those animals for anything suspicious. Even if we tried to feel around for something, I'm sure it would be difficult to detect. I'm pretty sure that's way too much work for the reward that they're getting. Exactly. I bet Bernard even transported animals with synth in their stomach alongside ones without. That way, it would be even harder to say with certainty that something was amiss. Mm. She's probably in the clear. Otherwise, Bernard would have never left without her. I'm guessing he didn't know whether Pierre had already hidden the next batch of imitation synth before he fled. Just imagine, he sees the notice we put in the Steambird, and it turns out that one of the very cats he gave to Pierre for the smuggling operation is out in the open, roaming the streets of Fontaine. Indeed. If Pierre had already hidden the next batch of imitation synth, then Bonnie would practically be living proof of their crimes. He would have had no choice but to go after her. So... That's why he came to find you, and insisted on taking a closer look at the cat. Uh, wait a second, I'm a little lost here. I get the part about hiding the substance in the pets, but those... Uh, what did you call them again? Floating barrels? Why even put the animals in there in the first place? If you've got something as convenient as a floating barrel, why not just stuff it with the imitation synth directly? Why not wait to hide the stuff until after the exchange has been made? In order to make sure the animals could swallow the sealed bags, they made them extremely thin. Had they not done that, the animals would have likely bitten or chewed through them. That step would have required a lot of energy, as well as a certain amount of technical expertise. So, it was better left to the more experienced Pierre. 
We've already proven how easy it is to pick up trace amounts of imitation synth, so I'm sure Bernard was taking all the precautions he could to avoid the same fate. Okay, then let's head to the Humane Society right away and bring that guy to justice. I'll bring a Gardamek to speed up the process. Humane Society is literally where I teleport every single day for commission rewards. The headquarters of the Humane Society should be somewhere around here. Bernard could show up any moment now. Oh, here are the people from earlier. Wait, you're from the guards? Why are you scared, huh? After him! We can't let him get away! How are you running? Well, I have Lynette on me, and she's quite fast. <sighs> okay, you need to exercise a bit, my guy. Mercy, have mercy. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything I know. <laughs> my guy ran for five seconds. So good over the years. And you Average gamer. Such an atrocious deed in its name. Look, I didn't have a choice, okay? My father cared about those blasted animals so much, he didn't bother to take care of his human wife and son at all. While those animals were showered with love, I lived worse than a dog. No one asked. I was about to say that, thank you. Get to know Pierre. Well, after I took over the Humane Society, it gradually became harder and harder to maintain its operations. Until one day, someone suddenly passed me a letter. It said that I could stand to get a large sum of money as long as I helped them to transport some animals abroad. It was only after a few such transports that I finally understood what I was really transporting. But then, Pierre wrote to me, saying that we were already partners in crime and that I better keep cooperating with him if I didn't want to be reported to the guards. I would order wooden barrels and flotation devices according to his instructions, and then load the sleeping animals onto a boat. Once I sailed to the location he provided, I would dump everything together into the sea. And a few days after that, I'd come by again in my boat and pick up the animals sleeping in the barrels. Once I had received enough of them, I'd bring them to the harbor to be adopted abroad. That guy, Pierre, he was running the entire show. He set up all the meeting times and found all the foreign adopters. Oh, oh and he even supplied all of the goods, too. I just did the transport. He was the one who planned out and executed everything else. Look, I don't know, okay? I've never ever met him in person. We've only ever communicated through letters. And when did he send his final letter to you? J just last night. He said that the Marshalsea Phantom is now after him, so he's planning to go into hiding for some time. He didn't mention where he's thinking about going, though. B but he did tell me to look out for the guards. It's been a few days since Pierre's last appearance. I'd wager that he sent that letter after he found his hiding spot. I... I burned them. It was on his orders. I had to burn every letter after reading them. I, I wasn't even allowed to share them with the rest of the society employees. Sure sounds like you're trying to use the lack of witnesses or evidence to pin the blame on Pierre. No, no I swear, this time I'm only telling you the truth. Well, we can check the truth of your statements at the Opera House. I hope you know what'll be coming for you if I were to find any discrepancy between the evidence and the testimony you just gave. I know, I know, I swear I was just telling the truth. <sighs> My thanks to you both. Had it not been for you, I really don't know what would have happened to this case. Bonnie helped too. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> That's true. It was all thanks to her that Bernard was- Who raped the cat. <laughs> and it looks like she's grown quite fond of you two as well. <sighs> then I'll leave you be. Just let me know if you find any other new leads. Well, <sighs> Lynette, now you have a new cat. What's up, Lynette? You need more tea? What? Attempt to close the case. Something on your mind still? Huh. It was that obvious, huh? Well, even though it didn't feel like Bernard was lying, 
After talking to him, I'm getting an even stronger sense that something's not quite right. We investigated so quickly that perhaps we've missed a thing or two along the way. Let me activate deduction mode and consider deduction. things again from the top to see if we can find anything new. Is there still anything unresolved or strange that we should try to consider? Mm, Bernard's letters. Bernard claims to have received a letter last night from Pierre. In the letter, Pierre stated that he had gone into hiding. Is there something wrong with the letter? Oh no, I hate this thing. Huh. Wait, aren't you supposed to talk at least in these? <clears throat> Why do you even have a voice actor? Uh, the Why is the cat so big? Wait, what? Am I tripping? Why is the cat so big? This is like, like, like a full-size dog. Hello? Now behave and follow me to the interrogation room. That hurt. Ow. <laughs> what? Adequate preparation and friendly aid can sometimes affect the result of these checks. Your current. What am I doing? I, I, am I drawing a car to see if I should stop them or not? What is this? Clue initial suspicions. What? Is everything really over? I still feel like the relationship between Pierre and Bernard is not as simple as it appears. Also, I've had this strange sense that something's off the entire time we've been on the case. And it has only gotten worse. Mm. What? Oh, I'm good. Easy there. I've still got nothing, and I'm nearly out of energy. Don't force it, just leave it to Lini and the others. Um, do you need a hug? Uh, I can apply the same thing I did to Kokomi. Alright, I'll stop thinking about it for now. At the very least, we've made it so that no more animals will suffer like those poor animals did. And that's what I hope. Let's go to the Humane Society and see if there are any animals left that might still need our help. Before my energy for today completely runs out. Well, review invitation, save first. Oh, okay, so where I stopped, so I went on this line, ending hints. I could just end it here. Okay, so I guess I went this way. Oh, and I ended here. Ending hints after reviewing the case, I seem to have some new insights. Well, I got the first ending. So I could just end it here and just get an ending like this. I can just continue another route. I don't know. But, well, I guess this is it. This was the first ending of my Lynette's... Um, of the Lynette's hangout that I got. So yeah, um, I guess I'll continue in the next episode. So thank you everybody so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.